Judge Day! <laughs> All right, now this is gonna sound a little bit like Groundhog Day. Talking about groundhogs, look at this little woodchuck chucky. He almost got me once, he almost got me twice, he almost got me a third time, now he's off. Now, if you wanna see more entertaining clips like this, click on the below link, because for the first time, you're going to see me and the amazing survivalist, Laura Zera, take on North America. Don't miss out, guys. dangerous animal now these guys here are a bit of a problem like in Australia we've got this problem all these pest animals in America you've got native animals which are considered as pests and one of them is actually called the beaver it's a bit of a pest to the farmers now I've had a farmer tell me that he wants to blow up this dam and he wants to kill this beaver he's gonna come down and he's gonna shoot it and I said hold on Chief, relax I've got an idea right so part of this idea is I'm gonna try and catch it manually now there's many ways that this could be done and I'm going to be using a couple of things to my advantage. One thing is, I've got good eyesight. The beaver, well, he doesn't. So that's one thing, right? Second thing is, I can camouflage. Third thing is, I know where his den is. So that's not how I'm going to catch him. Today, what I'm going to be showing you is how relocating animals can be beneficial both for the farmer and for the animal. You know, it's not just a one-way thing. And I think at the end of the day, it's all about trying to find a mutual agreement between the beaver and the farmer. Let's say. You almost outsmarted me, but lucky I'm really intelligent. Yes, that was a face plant that you saw. 
Go figure, when the moment of truth finally came, I would be on the other side of the dam. Shit! Shit! I need your help! Coming! I need your help! Okay. And of course, it was all my fault that the swamp was full of slippery logs and that it's a slow, hard sprint through knee-deep mud and waist-deep water to finally reach Andrew and our furry friend. <sighs> okay, what can I do? Help me. Help me. Help me. Watch it because he's aggressive. You almost got me before. Okay. Can I come behind you? Yes. Can you pressure up? So watch it because if he goes... Gonna go. Okay, I want to bring him up. Come on, get up! Just watch him because he's, yeah. he's, he's dangerous. Settle. You gotta be very careful. Watch it because he's yeah. gonna have a go at you. Okay, just trying to get out of the way. Now with beavers, they've got these big teeth, and if they give you a bite, they're probably not gonna let go. I'm trying to be really careful with him right now, babe. Just get ready to help me out. Yeah. Because I can't get him under control. My foot's stuck in the mud. I can't get my foot out of the mud. Let me get my foot out of the mud. Well, it's actually taken us a while to try and catch this animal. And you're probably thinking, why don't you grab him on the back of the tail? Chuchi, you can't, they're just too powerful. These animals are a bit like the Australian wombat. They're extremely powerful animals. Having said that, with these guys, their teeth, they get a bite on you, they're not going to let go. They've got some of the strongest teeth of any animal in the animal kingdom. These guys here, they're not just nature's chainsaw, they're a bit smarter than that. They're nature's engineers as well. And what I mean is these guys can make one hell of a dam. And I'm damned. Now, it's important with a beaver, if ever you come into contact with a beaver, and you need to handle one, the best way to do so is to scruff them from the back of the neck, like here. And you can see my left hand is actually grabbing his back left foot. Now, when you grab them, you want to try and get them behind the back of the Achilles ankle. Now, you can't do this with many animals, but for small, robust animals, like beavers, like wombats, it's probably one of the best ways to handle these animals. Now, you wouldn't try this on, you wouldn't try this on a deer, definitely not. Now, you wouldn't try this on a dog, because it would have you. But with a beaver, well, you can pretty much almost get away with it. Is you can just see that big flap that he's got there. Oh, just smack him. Got you right in the face. He's got this big flap. Now what these little guys, we use that flap for. Let me just try and angle him over here. Now what these guys, we use it, this, this flap for, I've just got it on my leg, is they use it as an indicator to warn other beavers and even the fish, anything else that can understand that the beaver's main way of alarming that there's a predator is this little flap right here. Now what he'll do is he'll slap that into the ground really, really hard, just on top of the water surface, making like a, like a clap. And what that will do is that will warn any other beavers within range that there's a predator and he's intruding. It's a warning. It's saying to the other beavers, get the hell out of here because there's some pecker on the way. It is important to find a suitable area which all necessary resources are available for his behavioural needs. Making sure you pick a location where he will not run into human conflict again. This is important. Developing on-site water management technologies such as proper drainage channels to prevent the suitable habitats preferred by beavers from forming and introducing fencing around water catchments and monitoring future invasions will help in adjusting your approach. Although capturing and relocating individual problem beavers offers a short-term solution, farmers and property owners need to adopt long-term strategies to prevent future beavers becoming a problem. And the opportunity for this individual species to fulfill his role in nature reminds us of our own personal endeavors here on the planet.